We want to discuss that also there is a difference between evolution and the theory of evolution. I have a simple mind. I got confused a lot. Your evolution and theory of evolution. I started by genre mixing the two. And that really caused me a lot of problems. And especially when I moved from a, a Christian school out to the public school system. Because I just had the wrong concept. And I, I, not, I'm not going to blame the teachers. I just learned it incorrectly. So what we have to do is, is show that evolution is simply an unfolding change that goes on. That is a natural occurrence. Everyone in here has evolved. We started as embryos. We were born. We were young. We were getting older. That's part of evolution. Evolution, in that sense, is a fact. It's a different from the theory of evolution, we're talking about apes. We're talking about how we evolved. This planet evolved. Just think a few months ago when we had the earthquakes in Japan. That whole island shift, that's part of the evolutionary process that goes on. Not the theory of evolution, but evolution. Another thing that confused me was the difference between species and kind. The Bible is very specific in showing that there are different kinds of flesh. Most biology books specify that species is, is the animals that can interbreed and they can produce fertile offspring. And the Bible is brought, describe, describes kind in a very broad sense. He said there is four kinds of flesh. And we read this in Genesis chapter 1 and also in Genesis chapter 6. There's the, the, flesh, the flesh of fish and of man and of animals. It's not the flesh, but he doesn't say the flesh of fish and the flesh of perch and the flesh of trout and the flesh of all these other things. Those are species. He says the flesh. So now we have kind. So biologists and biologists and anthropologists can look at that and we can be confident too. If you say there's kind in species, hey, we have no problem. The Bible says the exact same thing. There's kind and there's species. And we also know that part of the evolutionary process, biblical evolutionary process, there are, there are animals, there are fish that were in existence 400, 400 years ago. They're not in, in existence today. My bulldog, who I don't think were in existence for dogs 400 years ago, the little shih tzu that we have, the Akita, there's all types of changes that go on. We have a lot of animals that are extinct and some now uh, are here that were not 400 years ago. So the question is not whether things change. The question is whether life and man are products, products of chance or are we products of God's design. Remember how the Bible was set up to be read. The Bible was set up to be read by a shepherd in the hill and by the 21st century and however long the earth goes on. It's, it's set up to be read by a fifth grader and also Albert Einstein. Okay. So that we all, the Bible is for us all. So it has a message to each one of us. The basic message then is simple. The message is that God created everything and that man was created in the image of God. So that separates us. So later on we're going to talk about the difference between what science classifies as man and what we classify as man. Because science doesn't deal in, in the spiritual realm. An atheist assumes that matter is eternal. That the universe is, is a self-existing and scientific evidence now has come out to show that the atheistic statement in their little book has been proven false because there are a lot of wrong interpretations of the beginning. The Bible only gives one account, which is very checkable in every detail. And that shows uh, that in, through the text, uh, the uh, classification system. If you go into, this is, this is an example of an era that we see. If you go into the Chicago National History Museum, they have taken that, the, the tree of life, you know, it's supposed to start from from the base model all the way up to the top. And they're to try to explain all these branches of, of evolution and the theory of evolution. And that theory, simple atom, simple uh, atoms, molecules, cells, animals, everything started at the bottom. And the more complex you got, you're at the top. Well, the problem is when you look at the chart, they have the trial body up there. Well, the problem is that's 
one of the oldest fossil records that we have. It also is, has the most complex eye system available. The eye system of the tribal light can actually see about a foot and a mile simultaneously. It's a very, very advanced, much more advanced eyesight than in humans. So they really don't accentuate those differences, but it's up there. And so other scientists have recognized that. There's some other examples. I cannot pronounce the long word on that same tree, but the same examples. Very, very similar. Another classification that we see is you've seen the pictures of the little the, the, the monkeys that kind of go up as they as they steer step up. Well, problem that we have in the classification is some of those are in the wrong place. Some of those were were drawn by one tooth. Now, this is some of this is not a scientist's fault. This was a media event put on in 1972. Time Life magazine, who asked them to draw this out. So they just went to an artist who has nothing to do with the science. And so he started drawing these, these animals. <coughs> Scientists told him that you know, the, number, the third one over actually should be number two over. And then the, the third one from the end, he drew his toes uh, very poignantly. So you have to look at these things. And there was a lot of details that the scientific community actually has problems with that chart. But what happens? Again, the media gets to control what we see and what we listen to. So this is another example. Uh, when you look at something, if you go down to the, any type of natural history museum, there are going to be charts and diagrams and stuff that says this is the way it is and this is true. Well, first, find out who, who drew, drew, drew it, who came up with this stuff. A lot of times you find that there is an agenda behind the person who had it. It's not necessarily a scientist who is calling that agenda. But when you look at it, just take comfort knowing that that is, is not true. Take time before you go to attack someone to learn what is not true and why it's not, why it is true. And then start going back to the Bible. There's also the problem which animals can be classified. The evolutionary neo-Darwinism suggests that there was a large number of transitions between groups. I, think, I didn't hear all of Gary. I was taking pictures and going back again, so I think he covered a little bit of this. You know, we don't have all the mistakes that happen. If you start building something that doesn't work out, you know, you throw it away in trash, you start building something, you throw it away in trash. Well, in the animal world, if this was going to go through, we should have found a lot of evidences of things that just didn't work out. But so far, we haven't been able to find them. And one example would be from a cloak, if we go from cold blade to warm blade, we would expect something called a blue warm animal. That's another example of something that we have not seen. A new theory that has been started out, started about 40 years ago, it's called the long theory, because scientists finally figured out that the single tree was a problem, and that the evolutionary chart, you know, that it really wasn't working too well. So they decided, you know, let's try this long thing. What the long, the long process basically says is that there's a lot of simultaneous creations and development through these little different trees, and then eventually all these trees came together in unique time. Well, what it's interesting that when you really study this concept, it actually agrees with what the Bible says. Scientists, the evolution of the theory of evolution, people really do not like this. Because it says the word kind in the Hebrew is the word mem. And in a broad sense, in 1 Corinthians 1, 15, verses 39, which we talk about the different types of flesh, the same classification they use is actually identified in, in Genesis and in the flood chapter. So this is a case where science has developed a new theory. We can look at the theory and say, no, I have no problem with it. Actually, this new theory that you have developed, I can go to the Bible and say, that checks. I have no problem with it. Another thing God created uh, a lot of basic animals or symptoms within the species. Notice that we don't, there's no discussion about worms, insects, you know, or, or uh, let's see, flies. Those are not put into the, the early classifications. <coughs> Another thing that, that we notice is how man changes. In the Genesis record, it tells us, told, shows us that we first ate of uh, you know, basically vegetables and leaves. Then after the garden experience, 
our life, what we ate, changed. And then we know that it comes. We had first gatherers, and we had farmers, and hunters and gatherers, and then we, we killed things. Well, the, the, the record from biology and anthropologists confirmed that. So take comfort in that. That's another example that the Bible has been confirmed. 